Hello, and it's your boy again, Peter, and today we will be talking about typhoid fever. Um, what is typhoid fever? Well, typhoid fever is uh, an enteric disease, which means that it affects the gastrointestinal system, caused by the organism Salmonella typhi. There are different types, but the major types are the salmonella typhi which is the main cause of the typhoid fever and then salmonella paratyphi which causes paratyphoid fever the symptoms be with uh, um, the symptoms seen in these two diseases are almost the same uh, and the severity of the salmonella paratyphi the one that causes paratyphoid fever is not as uh, high as the one that causes typhoid fever but anyway we are not going to go too deeply into the organisms or the causative organisms in typhoid but we should know that uh, typhoid fever is a really really dangerous disease it's a dangerous infection and it occurs also in underdeveloped regions of the world it occurs in areas that have poor sanitary conditions and areas that have improper handling of food and water so salmonella typhi is transmitted through the fecal oral route that means usually people who ingest contaminated food food contaminated by feces or sewage or whatever or who in who drink water contaminated by fecal matter are at very high risk of contracting typhoid fever um, so, uh, it's really, really easy to prevent typhoid fever and you, all you just have to do is make sure you, you have very, very high hygienic standards, make sure proper sanitary uh, measures are taken to prevent infection. So, um, how does typhoid actually infect uh, humans? Well, like I said, it's fecal oral. When people take uh, improperly cooked food, when people take contaminated food, when you don't boil your food well, when you do not boil your food to the proper temperature, you are at high risk of getting not only typhoid but other uh, gastrointestinal infections. But now, our, our focus is on typhoid. So, the main pathogenic uh, mechanism through which typhoid infects the human being is by ingestion so when we eat food contaminated with high amounts of salmonella we are at very high risk of getting this salmonella in our intestines and when they get into our intestines they are able to invade the bloodstream through a mechanism that allows them to to gain entry into the blood and what they do is they they go through the membranes of the intestine to get their way into the bloodstream and cause a lot of unfavorable symptoms so first of all we are going to check the clinical features of typhoid it actually has a three-week uh, span of different manifestations of disease if it's not properly treated. And in the first week, the symptoms would include headache, malaise, cough, sore throat, and the temperature might increase from 40 to 41 degrees over a four to five days span, and it comes with very very vague abdominal pain constipation and diarrhea the diarrhea is due to the invasion of the intestine by the typhoid organism or by salmonella typhi during the second week between the seventh and tenth day of the illness we would have mild hepatosplenomegaly which means enlargement of the liver and spleen it might not occur in everyone but some people would have these manifestations and it occurs um, well 
I would say it, 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 it occurs moderately amongst people. It's something that you can actually see. And then there would be relative bradycardia, that is a reduction in the heart rate. And then we may have rose spots. Rose spots are tiny red spots which might be seen on light-skinned people, light-skinned patients. But this doesn't always happen to everyone infected with typhoid. In the third week, the patient will appear in the typhoid state, which is a state of prolonged apathy, toxemia, derelium, confusion generally, uh, disorientation, and or coma. The patient may actually uh, go into a comatose state because of the widespread infection in the blood affecting the brain. So this is the reason why it's really important to recognize the symptoms of typhoid and give prompt treatment. The rare complications that may occur in typhoid fever includes inflammation of the liver known as hepatitis, pneumonia, thrombophlebitis, this is infection of, sorry not infection, inflammation of of the of the vein of the veins with clot formation and this can block blood flow uh, blood drainage from organs and lead to serious complications and myocarditis which is the inflation in inflammation of the heart muscle and we have cholecystitis which is inflammation of the gallbladder nephritis which is inflammation of the kidney and osteomyelitis which is inflammation of the bone and psychosis which is a central nervous system affection characterized by um, a, uh, a completely disoriented behavior seen in the patient i ain't gonna go deep into that so anyway uh, these are the clinical features these are the symptoms so the next thing we have to know is how does the typhoid actually do its work now first of all the patient ingests contaminated food or water containing containing high amount of salmonella bacteria now we have uh, the acidic medium in the stomach which also helps with destruction of bacteria but when a bacteria has a way to evade acidic medium and when the virulence of the bacteria that the infectivity is very high it could escape the acidic environment of the stomach and gain its way into the intestines so it invades the small intestines and enters the bloodstream through this mechanism and then it is carried by the white blood cells to the liver to the spleen and to the bone marrow it infects bone marrow, it infects liver, and it infects the spleen, which is uh, the reason why patients would, pre would present rather with um, inflammation of bone, enlarged liver, and enlarged spleen. And then it multiplies in this in these organs and then it comes back into the blood when it comes back into the blood the bacteria then goes to the gallbladder it invades the gallbladder the biliary system and the lymphatic tissue of the bowel and then it multiplies in very high numbers the lymphatic tissue is important for helping with the inflammatory response so it multiplies in there and you have very high white blood cell count it also multiplies in the gallbladder because typhoid loves bile the salmonella loves bile and that is why when it invades the gallbladder we would have what we call the cholecystitis which is inflammation of the gallbladder and then it then gets passed into the intestinal tract again and can be identified for diagnosis in cultures from stool tested in the laboratory so when all these mechanisms come about they it goes back into the intestine uh, from where it started and then it passed through the feces and this is how uh, many laboratories can detect typhoid in the feces and this is known as corporological studies so the presence of the typhoid actually gives rise to an inflammatory response and a very high um, uh, a very high white blood cell count which actually 
brings about the fever, uh, the vomiting because of the um, the irritation of the GIT of the gastrointestinal tract, and would bring about the other symptoms which we mentioned and the uh, complications which may also lead to the death of the patient if proper treatment is not administered promptly. So, the treatment for typhoid is usually antibiotic therapy. Mostly uh, the drugs of choice which can be used include ciprofloxacin. Ciprofloxacin is a fluoroquinolone and it is used for, uh, for between one to two weeks of treatment 500 milligrams if i'm not mistaken i'm not going to go deep into the pharmacology so it's used for the treatment and we also uh, like we also have drugs like chloramphenicol but chloramphenicol is toxic so i don't know if it's still used but it's not uh, the first drug of choice other antibiotics can be used but it's better to get a stool sample to, to check for the salmonella typhi organisms and then probably do an antibiotic um, drug sensitivity test. Another test uh, which is used in most especially in the tropical regions uh, includes the White House test. The White House test is not really uh, one of the best tests but is still used and this is used to identify the antigens on the on the typhoid uh, organism so it's used to detect the antigens in serial dilutions the amount of antigens present in the serum of the patient so you could look up white house tests online uh, so this and blood tests are also used to um, detect typhoid bone marrow aspiration when we take uh, some part of the bone marrow from the patient it can also be used but it's a very invasive procedure and probably very painful uh, so, um, ways to prevent typhoid, uh, prophylaxis against typhoid includes the typhoid vaccine. There is actually a vaccine for typhoid and I'm not going to actually explain this just to save time. And also proper handling of food, proper handling and uh, treatment of water, water treatment, handling of food, proper heating of food, proper um, sanitation helps prevent the spread of typhoid and with that i say a big thank you to the people who were able to listen to my crap so thank you and see you next time <laughs>